Uh, you're very fortunate, we're very fortunate in Plumstead Township uh, to have this program and to have the professionals with us here today. I'm going to tell you, uh, when you can have, it's all about connecting people with programs, uh, not just because this is our county, uh, but our freeholder director, Joe McCary, has been at the forefront of bringing these programs and, again, connecting people with programs. And what you have today on the agenda, I, I have never seen a program put together like this anywhere at any time in our county. Uh, it, it's, it's a credit to the freeholder, to the staff, to the professionals that we have here, here today. This, this is going to help every one of us and help our families, help our loved ones. Uh, without further ado, I want to turn it over to our freeholder director, Joe McCary. You know, it's my pleasure to be here today uh, as director of the Board of Freeholders to let you know some of the programs that we do have. And you know why it's so important? Because as chairman of Senior Services that in Ocean County, we have the highest percentage of senior citizens in the entire state of New Jersey. We have over 160,000 senior citizens. We are one of the leaders not only in the state of New Jersey with our programs, but throughout the state of New Jersey. And one thing that we do, we know that some of our seniors are very vulnerable and they can become the victims very, very easily. What I want you to do today is, as Director of the Board of Freeholders, you will be my deputy directors. You're going to go out there and spread the word. What can we do to make sure we keep the scam artist out? We want the word to go out that you're not going to commit a crime in Ocean County. What we do in Ocean County, what we try to do all the time, is we want you to meet the people that are really in charge of your different departments. So you put the name with the face, so you feel confident when you call up, you always get a person. When you call up our switchboard, you get a person. When you want to talk to one of our department heads, and it's surprising sometimes that you can get Jeff Moran, uh, Steve Scottoro, uh, Jay Maloney, and they pick up the phone, and the first thing they say is, how can I help you? So our goal here today is, how can we help you? How can we do a better job? How can we help not only you, but your friends and neighbors uh, that live in your communities? The Consumer Fraud Act, uh, basically the Home Improvement Contractors Registration Act, which requires every homeowner or home improvement contractor in the state of New Jersey to register with the state. Um, and that law was passed in 2006, January it became effective, and it makes it a fourth degree indictable offense not to register as a home improvement contractor. If you're going to get any home improvements, not any house, any home improvements. That includes landscaping, driveways, uh, repairs. And Consumer Affairs is a vast agency that deals with all the licensed facilities uh, in the state. And that goes from accounting to veterinarians. Um, they all license, and most of the, or all of those 41 agencies have different boards that they govern the people within uh, those professions and handle the complaints. But the initial complaints usually come in to the Department of Consumer Affairs and where they have licensed boards, we will forward that complaint on your behalf to those boards. If it's within our jurisdiction to be able to handle, we're going to handle that in-house. And we're going to take your complaint and on the home improvement contractors, um, if you're contemplating at all of having any type of work done in your house, please take advantage of our facility and our ability to check these people out for you because unlike when I was back in law enforcement, we were limited to the amount of information that we could give out to the public. Um, we don't have that restriction in consumer affairs. So if there's a complaint filed against someone, we can give you that information. But just remember that just because a complaint has been filed against somebody, that doesn't mean they're a bad contractor. We're going to give you the information that we have. The majority of those types of complaints that come in or miscommunication. So when we get involved and we take the complaint in, uh, you have to sign a complaint form and that complaint form gives us the authority to act on your behalf. So we'll contact the uh, contractor and a lot of times we'll just find out that there was a misunderstanding, the contractor will go back out there and take care of the job. And that's in the majority of cases, you know, because the contractors that we do have are, are really on the whole very reputable firms and they do what they're supposed to do but there are that small percentage that will try and get over on you every day of the week so if you follow the rules please take our brochures out in the back because it gives you a lot of information on the do's and don'ts of hiring home improvement contractors 
And one of the first things is to check out that contractor. Give us a call. We can tell you, or if you're computer literate and you can go on the computer, you can go on the state website, and you can look up this information yourself. You can see whether a contractor is registered. And by calling us, we can tell you if there were complaints against them and how many complaints there were and how they were resolved. Sometimes those people are well known to us, and um, we can tell you, you know, well, these are the complaints that we have, these are the actions that have been taken against them, and then you form your own judgment. But we're going to give you the pros and cons of all of these uh, contractors. Okay. So check out the contractor, first of all. Make sure he's a legitimate contractor, and he must have a home improvement contractor registration number. And that number is supplied by the state. And what that does, it gives us a paper trail on being able to find this contractor in the event that we have a problem with them. This number requires, before they even get the number, they have to supply uh, an insurance policy of a minimum of $500,000 to cover them in this event. We get the number, they have to follow certain rules in their contracts when they do that, and we'll get into that in a second. But once you, you've checked out the contractor and he's a legitimate contractor, there are other things that you might want to do. You want to go out there and get some uh, uh, estimates as to uh, what you want to do and to check out uh, referrals that they may have. Now, if you're a contractor, I mean, I'm not going to give you a referral that's going to give me a bad referral, so uh, that's not always the best way to do, but you can go out and check uh, the quality of the work on some of these projects that it's local. You'd be surprised if you went up and knocked on somebody's door and say, you know, I'm contemplating using such and such contractor and they use you as a reference. You tell me a little bit about them. You know, if there's somebody outside working next door in the neighborhood on the, on the lawn or something, you could check, check with those people too and see if, if you could find out any information on them. Um, the second thing is to get a written estimate on how much it's going to cost. And you have a three-day rescission on that, three business days, where you can uh, rescind that contract without any penalties. Um, so think about what you're going to do. Check out the contractor. In the next phase, they're going to ask you, a legitimate contractor is going to ask you for a deposit. Now, there are people out there who are going to try and get all of their money up front. Don't fall for it. Our recommendation to everybody is if you're going to be hiring a home improvement contractor, one-third down on the inception of the contract, one-third halfway through the contract, and not another nickel, not another nickel, until that job is completed to your satisfaction and has been inspected by the community in which you live, code enforcement. Because in order for these people to get a permit, they have to have a legitimate home improvement contractor's number, and it must be registered with the town, and when they apply for that permit, they're going to ask for it. So. Those are the things to do. Many times they'll ask you to go get the permit yourself or submit a drawing that you handwrite or they will give you and say, please just sign this and tell them that you drew this and that we're, we're going to do it that way. Protect yourself. Don't let them get over on you. Make sure they get the permit. Don't give a contractor cash. If you give them cash and a complaint arises out of it, it's going to come back to us and there's no paper trail for us to show you that you ever gave this money. Pay them by check, pay them by credit card, but do not give cash and do not give them all of the money till they're finished because once they're done and they got all your money, and if it's not to your satisfaction, it just makes it all the harder to, uh, to get your money back for you or to get the problem uh, remedied. Hello, I'm Jane Maloney, Director of the Ocean County Office of Senior Services. Ocean is home to about 160,000 senior citizens, and you're watching Ocean TV 20.